how to use a Z-Depth Pass in Nuke. There are multiple ways we can use the Z-Depth Pass in Nuke. In this video, we will be covering the Z-Defocus node and lens filters, generating fog and atmosphere using a Z-Depth Pass, animating a focal shift, and covering a few other problems you might encounter whilst using a Z-Depth Pass in Nuke. This tutorial is specifically for a Blender to Nuke pipeline. Take a look at the chapters in the timeline or video description if you want to skip ahead. Hit R for read file. Select your rendered sequence, hit tab to bring up your search bar, then type in shuffle, go to your no properties and select view layer combined to see your sequence in the viewport. Then using your search bar, create a ZD focus node and plug the arrow into your image sequence. You'll probably find as you change your blur maximum and size, the whole image is affected. This is because you need to change your depth channel to the correct blender pass. Select view layer depth Z from the drop down menu. The math drop down menu controls how Nuke interprets and displays the results of your depth pass. I usually use depth or direct with Blender Z's depth pass. In your output drop down menu, focal plane setup and layer setup visually show your focal point and depth of field using a color ramp. Move your focal point in your viewport to select what element you want to be in focus. Then, using depth of field, you can control how large the area of focus is. Blue shows the area that will be out of focus in the background, green shows the area in focus, and red shows the foreground area that will also be out of focus. Switch output back to result and we can see the ZD focus is working. The background is out of focus while the foreground is sharp, however it looks weird. You'll notice along the edges that it's noisy and there's artifacts, especially in the bright areas. This is because I rendered this with low samples, but because I use the denoise function in Blender, we can't see the noise in the combined result. You can see this noise in the Z depth pass by jumping over to your view layer depth Z pass just under the viewer and lowering the S stop value. Let's jump into Blender real quick. So here's our scene set up in Blender. Make sure your render engine is set to cycles in the render properties. Then we need to select denoising data in our view layer properties. If we're using denoising data, we actually don't need a Z pass at all, so you can deselect that. Now, switch back to your render properties and make sure that the denoise is selected and the noise threshold is off in your sampling tab. You can adjust your sample count here as well if you need to. Just to note, you can render a Z depth pass in Eevee, which is Blender's live slash game engine type renderer, but you can't render a denoising data pass. Okay, now render this and head back to Nuke. We can now select view layer denoising depth Z instead. You can see in my viewport, it comes out a little strange. I switched them after direct, which seemed to fix it, and reset my focal point and depth of field. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. The highlights are blurring a lot nicer and the edges are no longer noisy, and we haven't added much or any additional time to our renders. Next, we're going to add a lens filter. The lens filter artificially creates what we often find in camera lenses. It's most obvious in defocus shots with high contrast. We can see it here in these defocus images of lights at night. Instead of perfectly round circles, we get some hardened edges like rounded heptagons. I grabbed both these pictures from Pixabay. It's a free stock image website. You can find lots more reference here and use the images for free. So we can create this vector nuke and pump it into our ZD focus through the filter input. First, create a reformat and make this square. I use 255 by 255, name it and select OK. Now, add a flare node. You can use flare nodes for all sorts of things. It's a super diverse tool, but we're just going to use it today to create the basic lens shape. View your flare node. You can do this by selecting your flare node and hitting 1 on your keyboard. Move the position of the flare to the centre. Put the inner colour up to 1 in your properties menu. Select sharpness to 0.99 to bring up the edge flattening to desired shape. Then add or remove additional corners to create your lens. Now plug in the flare to your ZD focus using the filter input. In your ZD focus properties, set filter type to image and change filter channel to RGBA red. Now you're able to see your lens distortion. You can add gamma and bloom. It will be most obvious in bright, high contrasted areas like on these asteroids in the foreground of this Saturn shot. So let's create some fog using Z depth. Create a shuffle, switch to view layer denoising depth Z pass and connect the depth pass to the red and alpha channel. Next, connect a color correct node. C is the shortcut key. Bring gain way down and move contrast up until you can just see all the objects in your scene. Make sure channels in the properties is set to all. Then add another color correct. Make sure the channel is also set to all. Next, create a constant. Choose a color for the constant by either using the color wheel or the eyedropper. To use the eyedropper, click on the empty box left of the color wheel, then control plus left click in your viewport to select a color. Add a shuffle node. Select the white box in the alpha output channel to give the constant an alpha. You can check this has worked by hovering your mouse in the viewport and clicking A. 
which will toggle your viewport between RGB and Alpha View. Next, add a merge node. Connect A to the color correct node and B to the shuffle, then change the operation to mask, then add another merge underneath your combined output and plug A into your merge with mask operation. Now you should see what looks like haze in the background. Make sure your ZD focus is after your atmosphere effect if you're using one. Now, in the second colour correct, you can control how intense the effect is by playing with the contrast and gain. You could also use a noise node or some actual fog footage or imagery instead of the constant. If you're finding it difficult to see what areas your haze is affecting, try switching your viewport back to the colour correct. Now we're going to look at how to fix a Z-depth channel that may have changed or disappeared and show an alternative way to set up an atmosphere pass using the key mix node instead. Delete the merge over node and create a key mix instead. Plug A into your fog and B into your rendered image, then mask into the colour correct. Plug the key mix output into the ZD focus node. We can see the atmosphere is working correctly, but the defocus looks different. This is because key mix has actually mixed all the channels together, including the Z depth pass. We can fix this by changing the channels in key mix to RGB or RGBA, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to add a copy node. Plug B into the key mix output and A into your original image, then select copy channels, view layer, denoising, depth Z and copy it to itself. So changing the key mix channel would work fine for this example, but I wanted to show the copy channels technique instead as there's a whole bunch of reasons your Z depth channel may not be functioning correctly. For example, offsetting and transforming the same shot on top of itself multiple times. The longer more complicated your node tree is, the more likely your Z depth channel will not be functioning correctly and copying it back should fix it. Once your ZD focus is set up correctly, all you need to do is pop into your output focal plane setup or layer setup. Choose a point on your timeline, move your focal point, right click on the focus plane and set key. Then move to another point on your timeline, move the focal point and it will automatically key. And that's it. A point to remember is that the focal point slash focus plane will not move on its own. So if your camera is tracking forwards or backwards in your scene, then an object that was in focus at the start might be out of focus as your camera tracks forward. If you want an object in your scene to stay in focus while your camera is tracking, then adding keyframes in the focus plane is the way to do that. Unfortunately, ZD focus doesn't work as well if you don't have a physical background in your 3D scene. Like we can see here, in the same scene without the backdrop, we get these weird edges and artifacts even when using the denoise z-depth pass. You can try slapping on a pre molt node, which helps a bit, but it's still not great. Increasing samples in your 3D render can sometimes help as well, but that comes at the cost of longer render times. I haven't found a great solution or a one-way trick to fix this in Nuke, and it tends to be on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. If you have found an amazing solution that works on every shot with a transparency slash alpha channel though, I'd love to hear it. Or if you have any Nuke tutorial requests or just want to say hi, then please leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope this video was helpful.